Now I want to give you some specific examples of consistent errors that writers make in their term papers and how to avoid these mistakes. The first thing is to use commas. And what kind of commas? Serial, S-E-R-I-A-L. Not serial like breakfast cereal. With a C-E-R-E-A-L. What serial commas mean is that you're putting commas after things in a series. For example, I'll write your sentence here. I am teaching at Wayne State on a Saturday and in the morning. What I've done is to put a comma after each element of the sentence. After Wayne State, after Saturday. Okay, there's two commas. Yeah. So that's the series. There are three elements separated by commas. You will see a lot in newspapers and magazines, advertisements, whatever. People are not using this anymore. However, this is a formal term paper, so we would like you to use the serial comma. When I edit John's paper for the legal news, we always use serial commas because it's a formal paper being published. Another place to use commas is after an introductory phrase. That would be like, however, comma, I will be off this afternoon. Or, on Sunday, I will be with my girlfriend. So, on Sunday is an introductory phrase. However, is an introductory phrase. So anytime you have something that leads into the main part of your sentence, you want to put a comma there. It is not a good idea to start your sentences with the word to, T-O, or the word and, A-N-D. People do that a lot, and it's, it's really not the best writing. What you want to do instead is to say in order to, instead of to, and don't use and at all to start your sentence. If you happen to interview someone when you're doing your term paper, you know, someone from a company or bank, whatever, make sure that you put the name of the person in your term paper and also on your references sheet list the person's name, title, and the date that you interviewed them. If you put dates in, which you probably will, in the body of your paper, you write them out like this, 1920s, with an apostrophe, that is not correct. There's no apostrophe. It's just 1920s, like that. People make this mistake all the time. Punctuation, when you have quotes, if you're quoting somebody, if you have a period, an exclamation point, a question mark, where does it go? It always goes inside the punctuation, not outside. So if I, I said here, however, comma, I will be off this afternoon. If you were quoting me, you put quotes at the beginning, here before however, and here at the end, after afternoon, within the quotes. These, these seem like small details, but they, they really add up. If you don't do these things, your paper looks a lot less professional. Another thing that we see a lot is not giving full information in URLs. Mm. A lot of people will just list the URL, just www dot whatever, and then period. We know nothing about that. We have to go to that source in order to see what it is. You need to provide that information on the reference page. You need to put in, if there's an author, if there's a title, there's a, a magazine title, book title, whatever. There's a title of you know, an article. What date there is. And if there's not a date, you would put the date that you got the URL mm -hmm. off the internet. Another thing that writers do a lot is to split infinitives. 
What that means is that it got the word 2TO. Like say it had the phrase to more, more fully understand the subject. Here's two, and here's understand, which is the verb. You want to keep to and understand next to each other. So it should be to understand the subject, because what are you under, what are you understanding? You're understanding the subject. That's the object here, more fully, which is the adverb. So my point is keep two next to the verb rather than splitting it up. You don't make that nice mistake a lot. Another thing that writers do is not italicize book and magazine titles. If it's title of a book, it's always italicized. If it's a magazine, it's all you know, entertainment weekly, it's always italicized. Now, in the body of your text of the term paper, in your development section, if you refer to an individual, a writer from whom you're quoting, somebody you've interviewed, please identify that person. Give the first and last name and say a little something about them. Like, for example, there's a writer named Stuart Rosenthal that people uh, quote from often. He's, he's written books on economics. He is a professor of economics at Syracuse University. So it would be good to say, Stuart Rosenthal, comma, a professor of economics at Syracuse University, comma, has this to say, and then you get a little quote from him. That way, we know who this person is, that they have credibility. Otherwise, it could just be anybody. So please let us know who that is. We look for words modifying a noun to be hyphenated. For example, if you said 30-year loan, loan is your noun. 30 and year modify loan. So therefore, you want to have a hyphen in between 30 and year because both those words are modifying loan. Another example would be mortgage-backed securities. Both mortgage and backed modify securities. So therefore, put that hyphen in there and join up, join up those words. Another thing that people do a lot is to say which when they mean that. Normally you would use that, which you don't use very often at all. Here's the difference. You say that when you're referring to the only thing in question. For example, the term paper that I am editing. There's only one term paper I'm editing at one time. The term paper that I am editing. As opposed to which, which refers to one of many, which would be like this term paper comma, which is one of 35 comma, is very good. So which usually follows a comma, that usually does not. That's another good way to remember it. You can, you can do that. You can get that in which right you way ahead of the game. Another thing that people do a lot is to say loose, L-O-O-S-E, like when something doesn't fit right, when they mean lose. Like, if you've lost something, I see that all the time. Like this company uh, is, is get, getting ready to lose a million dollars. They will say this company is getting ready to L-O-O-S-E a million dollars. No. No. You want an L-O-S-E. Another thing that people do a lot is not to use section headings. You know, those directions are there. A lot of writers will just have straight text, no heading for introduction, no development, no summary conclusion heading. Don't be one of those people, because we do know those things. Another thing that always happens in term papers is people don't use its, I-T-S, and its, I-T, or excuse me, its, I-T apostrophe S, and its, I-T-S, 
correctly. There is a difference. IT apostrophe S means it is. It's a contraction for it is. ITS is a possessive. Do not use repeated words. A lot of writers will say the same adjective over and over again. Here's an example. An important field because it uses issues important to blah, blah, blah. The writer has important and important right following each other. Don't be one of those writers. Use different adjectives. Look at your paper to see if you've repeated words consistently and replace them. And a good way to, to find that out is if you read your paper aloud, you'll hear, hey, I just said that word. All right, you want to make sure that your word usage is correct. For example, last term I got a paper where somebody was talking about Hart Plaza downtown. They spelled it H-E-A-R-T, like heart. It's H-A-R-T, named after cool. Philip Hart. So make sure that you don't make those kinds of mistakes. Check whatever references you make. Google them. Just Google them. Make sure that all your references are correct. Because that will really stand out if they're not. Okay, you want to vary your sentence structure. This is, this is an, a really important tip for good writing. How do you do that? You do it by using declarative sentences and sentences with introductory phrases. I showed you a couple of those a minute ago with the however. Did I erase them? Yeah, I guess I did. But, you know, the one that says however, or I talked about in order to, instead of to, it would be in order to, blah, 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 comma, blah, blah, blah. So, a declarative sentence is just a straight sentence, like, I am teaching this class, period. Straightforward, no must, no fuss. However, if I said, on Sunday, I will not be here on Sunday as an introductory phrase with a comma. What you want to do in your paper is to use two, about two sentences, two to three sentences of each type and then switch. You will be really amazed at how that makes your paper more lively and makes you look like a better writer. Because you're, the reader isn't reading the same kind of thing over and over again. It gets really boring to read declarative sentences, one after the other, and sentences with inter introductory phrases, one after the other. To vary it gives you that variety that helps the paper to really become more of a living document. Mm -hmm. You want to use whole sentences, not fragments. Let me give you an example. I will not be here. That doesn't even make any sense. You need the on Sunday to explain the full, the full meaning of the sentence. I mentioned that you want to put the names of authors in your source material, of your source material in your development section. If you're quoting from somebody, make sure you say who that quote is from. A lot of people will just include the quote and have a number or something that, would, that makes us have to go to the reference page to see who it was. All you need to say is, as John Smith said in his blah 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 book, comma, and then give the quote. You can have the full information, author, title, publication, publication date, on your reference page, but just to identify where the quote is coming from in the body of your text is really important. Gary, in 
a paper, a ten page paper, mm -hmm. which is going to have a development section, which is like maybe seven to eight pages. Rule of thumb, how many quotes? Very few. I'd say a maximum of three to four. That's a maximum. That's a very big maximum. And how, how long of quotes? Short. Short. One to two sentences max. Otherwise, we want you to paraphrase. We want your opinion. Yeah. When I say three to four, I mean that really as a maximum. If you can avoid putting that many quotes, direct quotes in, please do that. If you, if you just have two elements in a sentence, you don't need a comma. People are putting commas where they don't need to. You know, like I'm talking about putting commas where you do need to. Here's a case where you don't. Let's see. Let's see. I am friends with John and his family. I've seen a lot of writers put a comma after John. You don't need it. Even though there's an and here, there's only these two things, so no comma. So only put commas where there's more than two elements when you're listing the series. Okay, make sure that your sentences make sense. And here's a good example of a fragment. This is what I was looking for. Banks begin to lend money of housing through credit. That doesn't make sense. Bank, banks begin to lend money of housing through credit. That's not a whole sentence and it doesn't make sense. So make sure that your sentences do have a real meaning to them. Okay, one thing I do want to mention to you are sources. There are two books that will be very helpful to you if you want to look at good sources for writing. The first is called The Elements of Style. And it's by Strunk, S-T-R-U-N-K, and White, W-H-I-T-E. Really thin book, published in the, the early 50s, I think, late 40s. And it's an invaluable resource because it talks about a lot of the things that I mentioned to you. How to use commas, when to use them, what not to, what are real sentences instead of a sentence fragment, those kinds of things. So check that book out, it's really good. The other one is the Bible for editors and publishers. And it is called the Chicago Manual of Style. This book is published by the University of Chicago Press, and there are many editions of it. They come out every couple of years. What this is, is a compendium of grammar, style, and structure that publishers should use in creating professional documents. It has a lot of information on how to write well, how to present a good term paper, that kind of thing. 